welcome back to my channel, Why Not Travel? Today, I will be telling you guys about my third travel confession, the time that I got scammed. So, the first trip that I did by myself was living in Colombia. So I moved to Colombia, and uh, after hearing all the things everybody had to say about me being crazy, about traveling by myself and moving to Colombia, I still did it and um, I found this apartment which was amazing. Uh, a friend of my uncle's helped me find the apartment. So in Colombia it, is, it isn't like the easiest to find an apartment by yourself because you have to have a local or somebody refer you. Uh, you can't just sign a lease without a local helping you out or referring you. So I got this nice apartment and it was wonderful. The only problem that I had there was that the internet wasn't stable. I work remotely, so it is very important for me to have good, stable Wi-Fi. The problem was that it wasn't able to be fixed, so I had to move out. And I started looking for apartments. It was a little bit hard for me to find one. I stumbled yeah, upon this website, which, which honestly I have no idea of what it was. I don't remember. But uh, I found an apartment which was really nice and it was cheap and I messaged the owner and I told her that I was interested in renting out the apartment and she told me that there were other people you know, looking at the apartment and that she couldn't um, kind of wait for me to come and check out the place. She had told me that she was out of town so that she couldn't show me the place that weekend. Plus, I was flying out to another city. I was living in Medellin and I was flying out to Cartagena that weekend, so I wasn't, anyway, able to check out the place. So, anyway, I decided to deposit half of the rent to her personal, personal account so that she could hold that apartment for me. Guys, great, great mistake. This is where I went wrong. Although this girl who pretended to be Laura, I don't know if that's even her real name, but uh, she had been messaging back and forth with me. She was pretty open about the whole situation she gave me. She sent me pictures, she sent me her resume, some references like family and phone numbers of some friends, I don't know. But since I was traveling that weekend, I didn't take the time to actually check her references and decided to just send her half the money so she could hold that apartment for me and not rent it out to anybody else. Huge mistake. So then uh, I went to Cartagena, got back from the weekend, um, and on Monday, on that Monday, I started messaging her. I told her that I needed to know what time was convenient for her for me to move in and all this and that, but I waited all morning and I still had no reply. They use WhatsApp in Colombia and um, when you send a message, you get one check, which means you've, your message has been sent. When you get two checks, it means that your message has been sent and it has been received. When you get two checks and they are in blue, it means that the message has been read. Well, the messages I had sent her were just with one check, which meant that she never actually received them. I started sketching out then but I tried to message her again. I told her that it was urgent, that I needed to work the next day, so it was very important for me to move in. And um, I still didn't get any reply, so I called her. And that's when I realized that she blocked me. So I got very upset after crying and feeling awful because, you know, I was in a country where I didn't really know anyone and I didn't know what to do. I felt really stupid for sending in money and uh, you know, getting scammed by somebody that I trusted because I thought that we were best friends. <laughs> so I, I felt really bad and I tried to look for another place but I, I, I didn't know what to do because I, at this point I wasn't trusting anybody. I didn't want to book anything online and at the time I didn't really know much about Airbnb. This was about like two years ago. So I thankfully messaged a friend that I had made while I was there and he told me that he was out of town so that I was able to 
stay in his apartment in the meantime uh, until I found another place. So thankfully that happened and I was able to, you know, look for a place and uh, yeah, anyway, long story short, I ended up becoming roommates with this friend because and a room in his apartment ended up opening up, so it was cool. Anyway, back to getting scammed. I would say never to never send money or talk to anybody privately away from an actual website. I've never used booking.com or expedia.com. After this situation, I started using Airbnb and it has really worked out for me. Uh, this video is not sponsored by Airbnb, by the way, so. <laughs> but um, yeah. Since then, I've been using Airbnb and it has been wonderful because I can check out the reviews and I can message hosts and if there is any problem, customer Airbnb customer service is amazing. I've never had any issues with them, so uh, I usually use Airbnb uh, unless you're staying like at a hotel or a resort that's known or if you have a friend or somebody recommends you an actual person or a place that you can book, I would say to try not to send money away from these platforms because it can be dangerous, you will get scammed, people know when you're a foreigner and you know, this Lauda girl who scammed me probably isn't even Lauda, she probably isn't even a girl and uh, you know, she's probably somewhere else using my money. Thankfully it was only like $250 so I didn't feel too bad but it was just the feeling of you know getting betrayed or just getting scammed it just felt awful and you know like being in that situation where I really needed to move in uh, urgently and not having a place to go and you know relying on this person and this person you know blocking you and then you not being able to do anything. I still have those messages saved because I was meaning to go to the cops and reporting it but since I was still like in the move and all of that I never actually took the time to go and make the report which is something that you should do take some of my advice and just be careful with who you speak like I said people will try to they will steal information from other people and make fake profiles and unfortunately that's something that we have to look out for when you're traveling because people will see that you are a foreigner and they might take advantage so please like and subscribe because I will continue posting more videos like this more confessions let me know in the comments what other confessions you would like to hear about I would love to share these with you and hopefully you will learn from my own mistakes <laughs> but anyway uh, hopefully you enjoyed this and I will see you in my next travel confession or my next travel video